Hey, it's Dr. Spears here. I want to talk to you guys about that post I recently put up sharing about a student of mine who's preparing for the MCAT. He's been working with me for a couple of months now, and however, he plans on taking the MCAT in March because we all know I advise you take the MCAT early in the spring that way. In the unforeseen event that something goes wrong, you have time for a retake and also will get your scores back in time for actually applying to medical school right when it opens up in mid-June or so. Because remember, there's about a four-week delay between getting your scores back. However, another point I would like to make, though, is the students I work with, and if you're just hearing this video for the first time, or if you heard me around before, you know what my number one mantra is. The MCAT's a test you want to take once and only once. And that's actually the words from one of my mentors. He's an MD, PhD, used to be on admissions committee at the University of Chicago, prior to school of medicine, so he knows what he's talking about. And you guys need to keep that in mind too while you're preparing for the MCAT because this really is a make or break test that's going to decide whether you get into medical school or not because no matter what you've heard, what other people tell you, the MCAT is the number one factor that medical school admissions officers use when they're going to decide who they're going to admit to medical school because it's an easy way to make an apples to apples, oranges to oranges comparison of applicants because if I'm an ADCOM member, you go to school over here, you go to the private school over there, you go to state school, public university, and you have all these different grading um, scenarios in play, and I'm just not going to know the difference between certain GPAs. Yes, I'm going to know the difference between like a 3.9 versus a 2.8 or so. Yes, that's very obvious, but once you start getting up there when everybody who's applying and gets into medical school at a 3.7, it's really hard to slice and dice those numbers, but that MCAT, that percentile, that really stands out and allows us to really um, see where you actually stand in comparison to everybody else who's applying to medical school. And that's what you need to keep in mind. It's not just about you. A lot of students think, oh, I need to do this. I need a chance to show AdComs. I have what it takes to get into medical school. Yes, that's important. But the big picture that you need to realize is you're competing against everybody else who wants the exact same thing as you. And there's 53,000 pre-med students who apply to medical school each year and only about 21,000 of you are going to get in. So purely based on the numbers, somebody's going to be upset even if you're qualified. And so school are looking for anything and every reason to say no to an applicant and you just need to be aware of that fact going into the process and when it's that competitive schools can just the most minor detail could be something to totally derail your application for getting into medical school so just keep that in mind when you're going through this process and really give the MCAT what you need to do like the attention that it deserves and really study for it make it your life put everything on pause for about three to six months or however, however long you need to study for the MCAT and you're going to be really happy with the results that you get if you study the correct way and do things that actually are high yield because the worst thing that you can do is spend weeks or months studying the wrong way for the MCAT. A lot of times I get students that are telling me, Dr. Spears, I'm enrolled in this commercial MCAT prep course. They're, I'm doing everything they're telling me. I'm doing all the assignments. I'm doing the readings, watching the videos, doing the problems, but my score isn't improving. Right now, I'm not even a competitive applicant. I'm at a, like a 502. Let's say a 502 or so. I need to be at a 510. 10, 5, 11, just to even really be competitive for getting into medical school. I just don't know what's going on. I'm doing everything and it's not working. And that's the problem with a lot of these MCAT prep courses is they teach you the science, the social sciences, and all the things that you need to know for the test. They teach you the content. However, that's only half the battle. The other battle is being action knowing how to actually apply that content 
on the actual MCAT because the MCAT is unlike any test you've ever taken before. It is not a memorization test. If that was the case, I would say, okay, if you study XYZ amount of hours, I know you're gonna get the score because it's just purely based on memorization. Or if you memorize XYZ amount of facts, then this is a score you're gonna get because I know that this is just how the, um, the scale works for memorization and how it correlates to an actual MCAT percentile. But that is not the case. I'm sure you guys would love if that was the case, but that's just not how it works. And unfortunately, your pre-med classes are teaching you the wrong way to prepare for a career in medicine. Because what do you do in, in pre-med classes? It's like, go to class, go to lecture, go over the PowerPoint, do the reading, do the problem sets, take a test. That works. You usually can do well doing that because the professor at that level, they're just saying, are you coming to class? Are you doing the work? And I wanna know if you're doing that. And then if you do that, you're gonna get a decent score for the most part. However, when you're taking these standardized board type tasks like the MCAT, it's a totally different ball game. It's not about did you show up and do the work. It's about do you actually know the underlying concepts and can you apply these concepts to novel problems and situations that you haven't seen before. That's what the MCAT's really getting at. They want to know are you critical thinker, not can you memorize the um, Krebs psycho, um, what is um, so far removed from thing I'm forgetting the name of that chemistry um, scale with all the um, things on there. It's, the name will come to me, but that's beside the point. So that's what you just need to know. See, you don't even need this in medicine. I don't even remember that. I, obviously, I know certain things like how they work and stuff like that, but I'm getting ahead of myself there. I just had a loss of thought, so I'm going to come back to that. But the MCAT and other tests, like their critical thinking skills, because think about it. You have a patient comes into the hospital, the emergency room or something like that. You get to quickly um, do a history physical and then come up with your differentials. What's the most likely thing that this patient has? And not only what's the most likely thing this patient has, what's the thing that's going to kill this patient first? Because you can't miss that. And then you just work your way down. And so you can't just memorize things because patients don't present in textbook classic scenarios. And that's what the MCAT wants you to know. Can you kind of reason, think outside the box when you're um, approaching patients and clinical medicine? Because that's all that it is that you're going to be doing for the rest of your career. And so the MCAT's really just a gatekeeper can you get over this hurdle can you cross this obstacle and if you do well then we trust you that once you're in medical school you'll learn the knowledge that you need to know and then be able to apply that to patients that you see in the hospital or clinic so that's what's going on there and so it's not memorization at all it's thinking outside the box and my course actually i have my mcat mastery companion course actually teaches students how to think differently my thing is i'm going to teach you how to think like a doctor so that you can outsmart the test writers because there's only so many ways that test writers can make questions on certain topics but you as a student, you just come in there like, oh, I learned this in class, how to do it that way. And the test writers, they know where you guys are learning, how you're going about it. And so they're going to throw in some wrenches, some monkeys or whatever you want to call it to kind of see, did you just memorize it or do you really have a true in-depth understanding of this topic and can apply it to a novel situation and so that's why when you get in get in on the MCAT you're taking a test and then you're like wondering like oh a lot of the questions they're different they're different in the sense that they're charts their graphs, their scientific experiments, and it's things that you're not going to find in your textbook. You're not going to find it in the PowerPoint, and you just can't go and like study and learn all of this. But if you have an underlying um, that foundation of knowledge, then you'll be able to do what you need to do to solve these problems. And that chemistry thing I was forgetting it came back to me it's the periodic table so obviously we don't use that too much in medicine not well some things we do um, but like electrolyte imbalance and um, reno and stuff like that and even hyponatremia so some of those things you use that for us so I 
coming back to that. But yeah, so they could do something with that for you on the MCAT, and you would think, oh, I, I just memorize a periodic table, a periodic chart, and so boom, if I know that, I'll be able to solve the problem. Nope, they're going to do something, they're going to throw a wrench in there where you have to think about it, like how do you apply that to actually solving a problem. And then one of the things with medicine is if somebody has like a cardiac arrhythmia, be heart beating too fast, you need to give something that's, I'm going to slow it down, and you're going to give them, um, what is it, calcium gluconate or something like that. And that's going to actually, it's going to get, it, it actually gets to the channel faster and slows it down so the heart's not beating so fast. And then you can kind of then go through and get the arrhythmia checked and put it where you need it to be. So that's just very basic um, science that's from your basic pre-med classes, your chemistry. If you're wondering, like, how am I ever going to use this? That's one scenario where we come into play, where that basic science from the periodic table actually comes into play with like electric potentials and like the nurse equation and all of that that you'll need to do for that. So I just want to go over that. So that so stuff is important in that regard. And you just need to know well, you need to know that with the MCAT, these tests, they're not out to trick you. A lot of people think like, oh, I'm taking this test, the test writer's out to trick me and all of that. No, they want to see what do you really know? How knowledgeable are you on these topics? And so I give you frameworks to show your actual knowledge because a lot of times students who don't perform well, they always say this test was an adequate reflection of what I truly know what I or what I think I know. That's not the case because you have to go by what you're actually being graded on and scored on. So a lot of times like you'll be like a B or C student, let's say, in your science classes, but you feel you know more and the professor really isn't testing the things that you felt are important you don't want to be in that situation and so that's what also the thing with the MCAT is because I have a lot of times students will tell me that if they're a retaker on the MCAT they feel the material came totally from left field no matter how much they studied how much they prepped for it it would not have made a difference and they're ultimately on their MCAT score you don't want that to be happen to you now the student I'm working with right now well, one of them, they're getting ready to take the MCAT on Saturday. And right now it's Wednesday and they already feel extremely confident. They feel they don't need to study anymore. They could probably take the test tomorrow and do really well on it. And the day before the MCAT, they're not going to do anything. They're going to just leisure, keep it easy, low key. They're basically ready to go. They don't know what else to do even to get ready for the test. And they're expecting to be at... 517, 518 on their MCAT. Another student I'm working with, they took the MCAT. They got a 518 on the MCAT. I have students who um, take the course. They've been studying for weeks, don't see any type of improvement. Then I say, hey, you need to watch this video. Look at this module here, my MCAT Master Companion course. They do that. A week later, they come back to me and they're like, Dr. Spears, I found what was in that course. I found what was in that PDF. And my score went up over eight points in a week. Imagine your MCAT score going up eight points in one week. That's life changing for you for your career and getting into medical school and really getting the eye of the missions committee. So if you're on the fence and you've been studying, you're not sure if you should get my MCAT Master Companion course, you have nothing to lose. This is a call a companion course because I'm not going to teach you the content. There's other people well versed in that. You already saw I struggle to even remember the periodic table. So I'm not going to be the best guy to remember all the content that you need to know for the MCAT. However, I'm the guy that you need when you need to know how to apply things. You need study skills. You need test taking strategies. And you really need an efficient way to prepare for the MCAT. Maybe you have a summer to get ready for the MCAT or your student right now, you're in class, and you're also trying to stack on MCAT prep on top of that, so you can't play around. You have limited time, and that's what my MCAT Master Companion course is gonna do. It's gonna give you your positively unfair competitive advantage so that you're prepping, you're only doing the things that's gonna be efficient, pragmatic, but most importantly, you're gonna see a boost in your score. I say you wanna study less, learn more, and score higher. So if that's you, you're thinking about 
got to take the MCAT, you're already in one of those review courses and you're not seeing success, then you need to reach out to me, Dr. Spears. You can find me at drpremed.com. An MCAT Master Companion course is what you need so that you can get a top score, you can be on the radar of ad comms and get into the programs and medical schools that you want. So MCAT Master Companion course will make a difference in your MCAT prep and ultimately your life and becoming a doctor.